So for this week, I wanted to do a self-portraiture challenge. And to challenge myself, I wanted to do a type of self-portrait in which you could insert yourself in the subject's shoes and experience what they're feeling. Most of the time, this is achieved by, sh by including in the frame uh, whatever the subject happens to be doing or what they're seeing or what they're looking at. And ultimately, the goal of the photo is for the viewer or the audience to relate with the subject of the photo. Now, this isn't uh, the end-all be-all determinant of what makes a good self-portrait. However, um, this is just something that I'm unfamiliar with and wanted to challenge myself for this week. I wanted to record the experiences and share them with you. Now, uh, before I go ahead and show you my photos, I kind of wanted to share you some people who inspired me because I feel like it's a little bit snobbish if I just go ahead and show you what I feel is self-portraiture without including people who I feel uh, do a good job at self-portraiture. So the first user we're going to go over is a guy named BlackMara55. And as you can see, he's taking this black and white camera photo of an old film camera, 35 millimeter. And um, because he's covering his face, it makes it a lot easier for you to kind of insert yourself in, in the what he's possibly doing. Like, oh, is there a scene he's trying to get? Is there a model he's getting a, a, a difficult photo of? Is it, is it a landscape photo? You know, this idea of what makes a good photo is present in his, in just his eyes, even though that's the only thing that's being shown. And I really like that. So that is an emotion I'm trying to emulate in my work. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, so for the next guy, we're going over a, a guy named, um, and excuse me if I'm mispronouncing this, uh, I'm from America. A lot of these names are, are foreign. Uh, Martin uh, Cushon, who took a photo of a gentleman smoking a cigar in black and white as well. I really like this photo, even though it shows his face and it's harder to insert yourself. I really like the mood that the photo gives off. Um, not a lot of uh, extra details beside that either. The completely black background, you see the movement of the smoke. I really like that. It's not really a deep photo, but it just has an aesthetic that I happen to appreciate. Um, so for the next couple of photos, we will be talking about the works of Michael Matty and Pedro Quintilla, who are astrophotographers and took these interesting portraits. And I happen to include them because even though they're not that similar, I do feel that they achieve the same kind of feeling of grandness uh, of you exploring and, and knowing there's so much more that you'll never be able to, to fully comprehend. I like that feeling of wonder. I also like the color as well, the silhouettes on the bottom, uh, including themselves in the subject. And I like the color of the sky going on. I think that's a nice contrast and gives a nice feeling, you know what I mean? Like you, you're the thing that lacks color and everything else has color around you. I really like that kind of emotion. Uh, now the next guy we're going to talk about is a gentleman named uh, Speed Wizard. I love his name. He did a photo in black and white of uh, someone or himself, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's himself, it's self-portraiture, uh, holding a guitar. And you could tell there isn't much going on in the photo that would make you think it's that deep of a photo. But for me, since I have an experience with music, I could tell just by his hands that he put a lot of time in the guitar. And uh, him holding the guitar like that just makes it seem like he's tired after a concert. Um, I, I don't know exactly what emotion he's feeling. Maybe he's uh, contemplating about how to improve his work, or, or maybe he's just thinking about whether or not to continue playing guitar. I, I, these are feelings that a lot of musicians have. A lot of uh, people in music happen to experience on a daily basis, and they experience a lot of doubts, a lot of tiredness. It's just something I happen to identify with. It's not something you may identify with, but it's something I kind of understood just by looking at the photo. And that's what makes photography interesting. You know, it, it's not something that is going to be able to convey, is not going to be able to be conveyed to everyone. It's mostly just for you. 
And the last person I want to talk about is a gentleman, I believe this is French, named Laurent Brisson. Uh, he took, he, well, I'm not sure if that's a man or a woman, but he or she took a photo of a gentleman enjoying a hot air balloon demonstration. And it was so easy for me to insert myself in the photo and just get this calming relaxation that he's getting. I could see that he's looking over the horizon. Similar to the astrophotography photos, you could tell that the silhouette is meant to like separate uh, the idea of like, oh, your, your problems are here on the ground and everything out there is what makes you sit back and relax, is what makes you pause and think, maybe even forget, think about better things. I like these kinds of photos. So those are the people who are inspired me. There are many others out there. Uh, you don't. You just. Don't, you don't have to just check Instagram and 500px. Uh, they. These people don't sponsor me by any shot. Like uh, these are just photo platforms I happen to really enjoy and find useful. Makes it very easy to find other artists, and uh, well, they happen to inspire me in my work. I take photography as a passion very seriously, and anything that can help improve my photography, I'm willing to accept as, as criticism. If someone's better than me in something, I want to know how exactly, so that I'm able to change my perspective on how I take photos. It's something everyone has to do as a photographer. So, that being said, here's my whack at self-portrait.